What's up? This is Stephen Bloodworth, and this is my June 2020 DVD update. As you can tell, I'm exhausted. It is currently 4.50 in the morning and I just got done filming back-to-back -back parts 1 and 2 of the Blu-ray updates and I can't believe I had to do a part 1 and 2. I normally don't like doing that, but I don't like when videos, especially updates, go for way too long and at least at this rate, you know, there'll be a video for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Not a lot of DVDs to show off in this update, but I did get some pretty cool stuff that I'm really looking forward to talking about. The first one's a Severin release, and to everybody that participated in the mid-year sale, God bless you all. I really hope you all get your email invoices. I got mine the other day, so praise the Lord on that. This one, I did get part one when it was first released. And I've been holding off on this one because I thought this was going to be nothing but a compilation of trailers, but there is a brand new documentary on this, and this is Volume 2 of the Video Nasties Definitive Guide. This one is pretty much a documentary on the return of the Video Nasties and all the problems the United Kingdom was going through with the video stores and all the censorship in the video stores for the VHS tapes really cool and this one does include 13 hours of trailers if anybody likes trailer compilations you know dvds like that you'll definitely love these and if you love the video nasty um titles then both volume one and two you would absolutely love this one i've been wanting to see for years it's pretty dated now um it's from ifc uncut i did see this one when i was in college and this one is, this film is not yet rated. This is pretty much a documentary on a lot of films that were given an NC-17 rating. And it pretty much goes into why films are given an NC-17 and all the trouble that these filmmakers have to go through to cut these films and make them rated R. I really like John Waters' interview in it and Trey Parker from South Park has a really funny bit in it. But... For anybody, I, this DVD is pretty hard to find now, but for anybody that likes, you know, documentaries on the motion picture industry, this is one that you might like. Like I said, it is pretty dated, but it's still worth watching. The next one is a Blue Underground title, and I can't believe I have never owned this before. I have seen it before, but for me being a shockumentary collector, I cannot believe I did not own the first shockumentary ever made, and of course that one is Mondo Can Kane. Um, I still like it, it is weird, it is bizarre, it's just, it's pretty much just watching a morbid documentary. Even the narrator knows that the subject matter in this is really morbid. This isn't for everyone, it is pretty dated, but if you're a shockumentary fan and you want to see where it all started, then Mondo Kane is where it all started. Another shockumentary, this one has been on my list for years, and a lot of people have told me to check this one out. I still need to get around to watching it, but this DVD looks just really cheap, and it's from Mr. Fat Dash W video from Long Island City. Holy shit. Um, I guess I'll have to check them out. But this one is going off topic. Savage Man, Savage Beast. Um, a lot of people have told me about this one, and I need to sit down and check this one out soon. The next one is a Lionsgate title, and I heard a lot of people saying they didn't like it for all the crap that was going on during the making of the film, which I agree. It is, you know, disheartening to see the ending for what it was. The rest of the film was pretty fun, I must say, but, you know, Ty West just really didn't um, get the film that he wanted out of this, but of course, it's Cabin Fever 2. Um, there was just a lot of things I did not understand of this, like, the question I have is, who are these guys that are 
going into the school, like this militia. Who are they? Why are they here? Um, Giuseppe Andrews just steals the show in this, and I really love the cameo from Mark Borchardt. But, you know, it's all right. It pretty much picks up where the original left off. But it's not the worst, but I really wish Lionsgate gave Ty West the freedom he deserved. This one's a Paramount title, and I saw this when it first came out. It's not a horror film, but it is really, really disturbing. It has Nick Jonas and a cameo with James Franco, and this one is called Goat. Um, it's pretty much about this one guy... He goes to a party at his brother's fraternity house, and his younger brother pretty much gets abducted and robbed, and his brother decides to, you know, kind of take him in. He's attending college, and he wants him to pledge his fraternity, and when he gets in it, he thinks that it's just going to be all fun, but him and the rest of the pledges go through severe hell being hazed by the fraternity brothers. It is a really mentally disturbing film, also visually disturbing to look at, but it is really well made, and I really can't say enough things about this film. It is really good, and to be honest, one of the most disturbing films I've ever seen. And that says a lot for it not being a horror film. This one has been on my watch list for years. Uh, this DVD might be out of print actually, um, but this is the last broadcast, and who put this up? Ventura Entertainment, or Wavelength Releasing, uh, put this one out, but it's kind of in the same tradition as the last, or, um, the last broadcast, The Blair Witch, this one I believe came out before Blair Witch, um, you know, kind of the same feel of people going hunting after the Jersey Devil. Um, I haven't seen this one in years. I really need to check it out. If you guys like the last broadcast, if you've seen it, let me know your thoughts on it below. This next one is from Warner Archive. This is a pretty expensive DVD. Um, I really hope Unearthed Films picks this up. Stephen Byro, release it. Um, Jeremy, NES Ruler 22, loves this one. And I can see why. It's a really well-made film, but really, really gritty. And of course, that's Gummo. I... It is such a mindfuck. This film really is a mindfuck. It just shows, you know, the lower class, you know, poverty-stricken people that, you know, some communities have. It's really sad, really disturbing, and just a lot of what the fuck moments in this. And the scene with the kid eating spaghetti and drinking milk in a dirty bathtub almost made me throw up. The next one, I got this one off of eBay. It's been pretty hard to track down. You could find it pretty easily, but it's pretty expensive now. This is from TLA Releasing, and it's a Danger After Dark uh, DVD. And this one is Suicide Club. Um, I've been watching a lot of Asian films recently, but I have only seen clips of this. I haven't gotten around to actually watching the whole film, but I've heard nothing but good things about it. If any of you guys have seen Suicide Club, let me know your thoughts of it down below. The next one's a Bill Zabub film. This is from Rough Pictures, and this one is called Kill the Scream Queen. I thought so much more of this when I saw the cover of it, but it's pretty much just a gory casting couch. It's a casting couch compilation with, you know, these girls thinking they're going to be in this horror film, but they just all end up getting killed. You know, I like some of Bill Zabub's films, but this one just really didn't do it for me. Yeah, there's some cool blood and gore and some nudity, but it's just one that I could not dig. And the next bunch are all Wild Eye releases, and I got around to watching all of them except for one. Um, this one... I really wanted to see because Gary Kentis, the star of it, he's the one the documentary is about, and I work with Gary on Todd Sheets Bone Hill Road, and he is just such an amazing guy and a great friend, but this is the documentary about him called Danger God. It pretty much talks about how, you know, the stuff he did when he was a stuntman, shows off some of the clips of some of his best scenes in it. 
I really dug it. I laughed. I cried. It's an amazing documentary. This is one you will absolutely love. The next one, I actually ordered this one from Dan Kenham. He was giving away a bunch of these. And this one is now out of print. And it is a rare documentary on Scream Queens. This is from, I believe, the 1992. This is from... And it's a Wild Eye and VH Shitfest collaboration, and this one is Invasion of the Scream Queens. And Donald Farmer, the same guy who did Cannibal Hookers and Demon Queen, actually directed this one. I need to get to watching this, but I'm just really happy that I got it. I got it for a good deal from Dan, and like I said, this one is now out of print. I'm not sure if... Uh, Dan has any more copies of these. This one is a Todd Sheets film, and I saw the original years ago. Um, it's a fun shot on video film. And this one is the sequel to it, and this one is Zombie Rampage 2. Um, it, what's interesting about this one is it shows, you know, there's new footage to it, but originally there was going to be a Zombie Rampage 2 back in the 90s, it never got finished, and they kind of use the old footage from what they were trying to make years ago and incorporate it in this one. It's actually really interesting. Uh, it's a pretty fun zombie film besides that. Um, you know, a lot of Todd Sheet regulars are in this. Dylan Vaughn Harvey, Antoine Skeel, um, a lot of the people that I worked with on Bone Hill Road, and I just... You know, Todd Sheets is a great friend of mine, and I watch anything he does. This was a lot of fun. If you guys like zombie films and just films with a lot of comedy thrown into it, then I say give this one a chance. Another Todd Sheets film. This is an anthology he did with Brad Twig, and I saw this one years ago. I saw the screener of it years ago that he sent to me, but this one is Sleepless Nights. Uh, this is a really good anthology. There's a lot of bits to it. My favorite segment in this has to be either the guy who tries to roofie all these girls or the one with the kitty murderer kidnapper. There's a lot of fun bits in this. If you like anthologies and you like Todd Sheets, definitely give this one a watch. And the last Wild Eye one, I have not watched this one yet. I just got it because the title can't pass it up. This one is Gorgasm, not to be confused with Gorgasm that SRS Cinema released. Um, if any of you guys have seen it, let me know. This one looks really, really funny. The next couple are uh, Massacre Video. Uh, this one I got, the two that I got, you know, people were saying were really disturbing films. This one is Woman's Flesh, My Red Guts. Seems like a uh, Japanese film, but obviously. But, if anybody have seen this one, let me know how it is. And then another Japanese massacre release, this one is Tumbling Doll of Flesh. Again, I've yet to see it, I heard it was disturbing. Please, if you guys have seen it, let me know what you guys think of it down below. And the last one from Massacre, and I've had a bootleg of this for years, and I finally just buckled down and got the DVD. And this one is 555. I have not seen this one in years. I rewatched this and really, really loved it. Um, it just reminded me of how terrible the acting from the um, murder victims are. It's hilarious, but there is some pretty cool gore in this. For any shot on video fan out there, this is one of the must watches for shot on video and then i got a couple of unearthed films dvds and this one i've been wanting to see for years i know it's shot on video and i don't remember if unearth has really put out any zombie films i don't know uh this one is bone sickness for anybody that's seen it let me know your thoughts of it down below this one i was really excited to uh find um grindhouse video actually has this for a really good price I think $14.99. Uh, everywhere else is selling them for really, really crazy prices. Uh, this is from the Russian Horror Collection that um, Unearth did, and this one is Nails. Uh, this one is a 60-minute film. Um, I've heard it's pretty disturbing, but a lot of people like it. It's a slow-paced film from what I was told, but a lot of people do really love this one. If any of you guys have seen Nails, 
let me know your thoughts down below. And the last Unearth Films title, this one, I'm in one of those Facebook groups, and a lot of people were talking about this one, saying it's one of the most disturbing Unearthed Films titles that has ever been released, so knowing me, I had to pick it up. This one is Visceral. It looks disgusting from the back of it. Everyone on the uh, Facebook group says it's really messed up. I can't wait to watch it. If you guys have seen Visceral, let me know your thoughts down below. And the last batch is all from SOVHorror.com. And, you know, I'll get anything that Tony releases, and I really support what he's doing. Um, I showed off all of these in the unboxing video, but I'll just show them off again. This one is Metal Noir. This is made by the same guy who did Gore Horror. And then I also got, I still need to check this one out. I'm really looking forward to this one. This one is Purveyors of Blood. Um, I just love what he's doing with these releases. And then these are the Warlock titles, which are really great um, covers. I love the cover art that he's done for all these. The first one is Death of Lantern, a Halloween theme shot on video film. And then the next one is Die BQ. I, I just have not gotten around to watching these, I don't know, but everybody just seems to love them, and I know I'll love them once I check them out. And this one I just couldn't pass up. Just, it's shit that kills. Like, you can't get any more funny than that. This one is Dingleberries. It just, yeah, I, this is probably the first one I'm gonna watch. Um, and then there is... An Evening with My Great Aunt Bedelia. Uh, this one looks pretty... I've seen the trailer for this one, and this one really made me laugh. And then this one, I've never seen a Christmas-themed shot on video horror film besides maybe theaters, too. This one is Happy Holidays. I'm planning on doing some sort of Christmas video when Christmas comes around, so this one you'll definitely see included in that. And then the last of the Warlock ones, this one is Stoinky Beach. I really don't know what to think of this one, but I heard a lot of people saying they really like it. And the last one, which I recently did a review of, this is the short film, the lost short film, from Mac Hale, the director of Mr. Ice Cream Man, and that is The Roommate. Um, and don't forget, Mr. Ice Cream Man will be coming to DVD soon from SOVHorror.com. Stay tuned. Whew. So that does it for all of the Blu-rays and DVDs that I got for June 2020. Guys, thank you so much for checking out parts one and two of the Blu-ray updates and the DVD update that you're watching right now. If you're new to my channel, definitely hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for all of my latest videos posted every Monday and Friday. And also follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram to stay posted on what I'm doing behind the scenes making these videos. And before you click off this video, definitely hit it with a thumbs up and let me know what DVDs you picked up recently and if you've seen any of the ones that I picked up. Until next time, take care and stay scared.